But there it is guys, the arachnid wall from start to finish. Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I'm here with my little girl zombie, the Chilean rose hair tarantula, and yes, I am still looking at this tarantula directly. I mean, I have finally circled back around and we're gonna make up some of the setups today so that we can get ready to start moving these tarantulas in. But before I do that, I do have to fix a couple fixes. I kind of screwed it up a little bit. So for those of you people out there that are loving tarantulas or for those of you that fear them and might want to try to get over your fear, you'll get a chance to see what we're gonna do with this tarantula wall today and figure out some actual cages for them to make them look beautiful. You excited, zombie? So let me go ahead and explain what I mean by fixes. So before we start figuring out some of the tarantula cages and getting ready to actually transfer tarantulas over into this new rack here in the next day or two, I wanted to show you that I did kind of screw it up. I made a major mistake. What I did was I measured these tanks and I made enough space for the tanks. The problem is, is if you see, there's a little extra leg on each side here. I didn't account for that. So you can see, there's supposed to be four tanks but if you can see this fourth one won't fit so i really rack my brain like how can i do this without ripping the entire rack apart because obviously i've already fixed all the rocks out and stuff like that so i think i'm going to do is just take this two by four marry it right up to this two by four like this real simple and then all i have to do is cut this here and cut this here and then i can slide this down i'll have to add a few more support braces in between no big deal i also got some led lights that i can hang in here because you don't want to go with uv lights with tarantulas it's bad for them so we'll get the lighting done get the fix over here the extra supports then I can actually start working on figuring out the actual backdrop then once the backdrops are all cured and we fixture that all out we can put in the bedding and all kinds of other decorations and then we can actually move tarantulas in here again within the next day or two so I've got my work cut out for me today but it's gonna be awesome this whole thing was like a perfect example of not freaking out about situations obviously I built it I put all this rock fixture on it and then I realized I had the wrong sizes so rather than like tripping out and losing my mind I thought let's just take Take a minute, let's think of the easiest fix possible. And it took me a day or two to figure out the best way to do it. Originally, I was gonna kind of tear this side apart, all kinds of stuff, and then I thought to myself, oh, we got a pretty simple fix. Yeah, it's not exactly perfect, but it's gonna work. And once it's all done, you'll never know the difference. But the first thing I have to do is actually remove all these tanks so I can start working on the rack. Not too much, I'm gonna to have to take them out to put the backdrops anyway. So all the tanks out, set over there, then I can start working. Now I can get started by again marrying this two by four right up to here and cutting these things out so that I have the space I need for the tanks to actually fit in the rack. So I doubt you guys tuned into the vlog today to get a wood shop lesson, but the truth is this is just what I have to do. So again, just the simplest fix is to just marry this board right up against this board, nail it in, do the same thing on the back side. And again, because I have to be able to extend this over, I just have to cut this out here, this out up there, and then the tanks can actually slide over to this one here. Kind of solves the problem. Again, behind all the rock wall, you'll never even know that I did this. If I didn't share it with you guys, you guys would never know. Now all I have to do is actually cut here and here and actually remove this board, and that'll give me the space I need for the tanks to fit in. That's basically it. Now I just have to repeat the same process, but now you can see I gained that extra inch and a half of space that I needed so that all the tanks fit. I know some of you may be getting bored, but hey, this is part of my daily routine. I am so excited to get this arachnid well done. So we have to just kind of push through all the steps and I want to bring you guys along on it. Next up is we have to actually just mount this LED light right up here and each level. Again, these are LED lights, which are fine for transfers. You don't want UV. It's going to be bright enough where you're going to be able to see them, but not so bright that they're actually freaked out because transfers do actually prefer a little bit more dim lighting. So regardless, let's go ahead and mount these things. All right, so we have our first lights on. I just have to do these next bottom rows here and then the lights are all set. Everything is set as far as the length goes and then we're off to the cages to start to decorate the fun part.
And that concludes the boring part of the vlog. Now the fun part, we're gonna go ahead and start taking each individual cage, putting a backdrop in it, starting to kind of mold it. And then later on today, we'll be able to actually put bedding in and stuff like that, and it should be good to go. Not to mention a bunch of decorations so that they look really cool. The idea is to make the cages look as good as I can, the tarantulas be as happy as they can be, but then at the same time, we don't wanna go overboard to where you never see the tarantula. So uh, that's the fine line we have to walk. So I have Lori with me because she's a little bit more creative than I am. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some of the material we have from Universe of rock just as backdropping over here and basically just kind of cut a backdrop I'll show you guys how you can use foam to kind of contour because the thing that a lot of people make mistake let's say you have a flat piece like this a lot of people make the mistake of just literally just like sticking it to the back sticking it to the sides and that being it but if you can contour it and make it wave a little more it feels a little bit more natural so all we have to do is measure this cut a piece and then start to work from there so here's where the artisticness comes in I cut some of this backing which is the polyurea which is kind of like the bed line or stuff but it looks like rock now we have to put it in here and kind of make it look as natural as possible it's a little bit of a trick but hopefully with Lori's help I can make this look good and we only have to do this on 13 cages The first thing you can do is you can take like pieces of styrofoam and you can put it back here. Ultimately what we're going to do is take spray foam and spray behind it and that's what will ultimately hold it all together when it dries. It'll be like a rock and that way nothing can get behind and stuff like that. But for now this is just the base that we have. Now we have to start molding it to kind of look a little more natural because right now it doesn't really look very natural at all. I'm literally going to take the crappy backdrop that this thing came with. Again, this is just foam. I mean, this wouldn't last probably two months if, if you were lucky. I'm just gonna cut a couple chunks of, of this out to kind of use it as like backing behind here to just make it a little bit more, you know, a little bit more dynamic. I'm not exactly sure where I'm gonna put it right now. Yeah, I'll put it back here for a little thing. Go out a little, yeah, definitely over here. Put it like that. And you can start to see, like, as you get that dynamic of a little bit more of a flow, you know, you've got a little bit of spot here, over here, it just starts to look a little bit more, you know, it looks just a little bit more natural because in nature there's not a lot of flat lines, you know what I mean? So just continue to work it until you feel like you have a good product. Then use the spray foam and you foam it all in. So I'm pretty happy with the way it looks right now. I think it looks pretty natural, especially once we start adding decoration and stuff like that. So now what I have to do is I'm going to cut a couple boards that I can put across from here to here as well as over here to here. And that's just going to keep things held while this spray foam actually dries. And then we can start adding some other stuff. And then of course we use these boards to just kind of keep everything in place. As that foam heals, it's gonna be like a rock. We'll have to go back and just fill in the cracks, make sure that there's nothing that the spiders can get behind. But that's the base. I know it doesn't look as pretty as you think, but trust me, once it's done, it's really good. And we have to start with the base before we can move on to everything else. We can add decorations. And we'll cover all of this up with the pigment that looks just like it. So you won't see any of the foam, you won't see any silicone. Even the seam right here, we'll just seam that right out. And uh, that should be really good. So so that is the first cage done, only uh, 12 or 13 to go. Again, you don't want every cage to look just alike. So what we're doing is we're taking the same piece that we kind of curled around, but now we're taking a different piece here that has a lot more rocks and crevices. And we're just gonna kind of marry the two. And again, once we're done, we can silicone this edge, put some pigment on it, and it'll literally blend together. And you'll just think that it's the same rock face. But uh, just again, we've got three different pieces. One piece here, a little piece here, a little piece here. And then we'll kind of mold this together. Again, foam it in so that it's secure and uh, that should be cake number two. Cake number two backdrop done. Looking pretty good over here. I think it's gonna look really cool with that really cool rock fixture over there. That's gonna be absolutely awesome. So again, this will dry maybe in a couple hours. Then we have to go back and do the silicone and basically feather everything out with the pigment. And then we can ultimately put all the bedding in and other decorations. So uh, this is just the first step in a long process.
And again, what you can do with it really is only limited by your creativity. You use the more wood finish on this one rather than the cement. And just uh, using different backdrops, adding little pieces, the curves and the contours and stuff like that, just make it look that much more real. I mean, what I was thinking with this is like, where would I find a tarantula? And then I tried to make the backdrop look like something like I would find it in the wild. So as we're kind of getting things to the finish stage, we foamed all the stuff in, we made kind of cool designs and stuff like that, but obviously Lori has to go back. First you have to do is cut away all of the foam so that everything works, not to mention that, you know, this is obviously all extra here. You can see how she cut it away right down here. And then she actually goes back, she'll put silicone on it, and then the pigment that actually blends things. So uh, this is the artistic part where it looks good. <laughs> Again, the process is pretty simple, really. Lori just puts a bunch of clear silicone all over the place where she wants to actually blend the pigment in. And basically what you want to do is kind of keep it natural like that. Some mistakes that people make is they'll actually take and smear with the finger thinking you want to smooth it out. In actuality, you want it to be kind of bumpy. Because when she takes this brush and the pigment, it actually can help smooth it out, makes it look much more natural. But you can see she's just covering that entire area with silicone, then she'll go back with the pigment. And you can basically see the seam more or less just completely disappears. And then you just continue to touch up to well, it looks really natural and kind of something that you would find out in the wild, so to speak. So Lori has a bunch to do here. Bruce is over cleaning up, getting ready to start putting all of the bedding in and stuff like that. So uh, we'll just keep on continuing on. Alright, so I am getting more and more excited as we're getting closer to the finish of the tarantula wall. These are the fixtured out cages that we've done so far. They're all in the racks now. You can kind of see all of these things, obviously. Now we have to put all of the substrate in, which I'm really referring to Bruce on all of that. Bruce knows a lot about tarantulas, so he knows what substrates to use, how deep we have to do, all of the other things. Obviously, when it comes to like the Goliath bird eater, we don't want it to climb up and fall, so we have to have the substrate kind of thick and we can't have anything hard, and that's the way we'll do throughout the whole thing. So that is the last thing we have to do now is get all the substrate and decorations in. Oh my God, the tarantula wall is starting to come together. Let me know in the comments what you guys think so far. And when it comes to the bedding, what are we using, Bruce? So right now we're actually using vermiculite and perlite to add add to our soil. And the main reason for it is the ver vermiculite here holds humidity really well in the soil, so and the perlite will help drain it to keep any mold from, from you know getting out. Gotcha, so it's a perlite, vermiculite, and soil. No chemicals, no fertilizers in any of them. Uh, and then you just mix it up, and then that's our base for our tarantulas. So we're gonna start out right all up here at the top. We're gonna work our, work our way down. Okay. And uh, with the uh, tarantulas that are more needed of humidity and things like that, we're gonna have, we're gonna use this soil right here. Okay. And any tarantula that's like a desert dwelling species or something that's just not gonna really like the water too much is gonna be more on reptile prime. Gotcha, okay. Cool. And then do this corner one right here. And there it is, guys, the start of the tarantula wall, or at least getting going. Uh, I'm, I'm excited. I can't wait. And what we're going to probably do is actually, I'm going to bombard you guys with tarantula content here coming up. We're actually going to do a tarantula feeding vlog where we feed everything because we want to feed them before we move them in because oftentimes once you move a tarantula, it goes off of food for a little while. So we figure we'll give them one meal. We'll show you guys and do a vlog about that. And then we'll actually do a vlog where we're moving the tarantulas into all of these enclosures too. With any luck, by the end of the weekend, we will have tarantulas on display at the Reptarium. And I think one of the real tricks here is going to be kind of setting up a bunch of the cages to where they're naturalistic. The animals themselves are really, really happy in it and can kind of get some hiding and all this stuff. But we don't want to make it so overbearing where you can't see them. So that is going to be the trick, Bruce. So oh, yeah. what's your idea? You're going to put some foliage on So I'm guys? going to try and make this look like a small little tree, but it, but I don't want it to like cover up too much because I want that tarantula to be able to be seen. So one of to be able to step on a ladder, take one look in there and see the tarantula. I also want these guys to feel safe. Exactly. So that's, that's the Main, it made the main priority here and obviously yeah. secondary is make sure people can see them. Exactly.
So we're moving on to the big cages first. So I see you're kind of building it up. What's the idea behind that? So the basic idea is these guys all really like to hide under like shade and log log laydowns and everything like that. So in the wild, like they would essentially find something for cover. Right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna provide them that cover, but we're still gonna allow people to be able to see them. We're gonna put the hide here, but you can actually look through here and see inside the hide. So that's why we're building up right here on the side of the wall. So we're gonna get all this thick, like a big mound around and sort of make her burrow for her. Ah, perfect, like it, like it, like it. So now that Bruce has this done, you can really kind of see what he was talking about. We have higher areas over here, and we have almost like a makeshift burrow that you can actually see from this side. Planted a few plants in here, probably do a little bit more decoration. But what we want to have is a, an area where the bird eater or the big purple spider is very comfortable. But at the same time, we want people to be able to see them. So I think they can hide right down here. They'll feel really comfortable because they'll be in a little bit of a den area, but you can still actually see the animal. It should be absolutely amazing. Bruce has everything kind of fixtured out for the most part we'll do a little more decoration I'm sure obviously with the arboreal stuff all that type of thing but it looks really good and the thing that I really love about this is honestly this didn't cost us a lot I mean we use little scraps of universal rock stuff it was really cheap it was all about being artistic obviously we have soil vermiculite we have a little perlite uh, a few plants a few things like that so I'll let you kind of get done with a handful of things oh, that yeah. you're just kind of making this thing look beautiful but there you guys have it the arachnid wall is basically done. I mean, it's going to be done in another hour or two. And like I said, we're going to feed the tarantulas in a vlog. That should be absolutely epic. And then we're going to actually move them, which that's where your job comes in because there's some of those I'm not moving. Oh, you know, I got it. No worries. Yes. Can you imagine moving the big bird eater? Oh my God. And that purple one, crazy. It's going to be an awesome, epic, epic, epic vlog. But there it is, guys. The arachnid wall from start to finish. And with that said, guys, I am going to go ahead and end the vlog. I realized that we didn't have like animals and a whole bunch of other stuff, but I hope that you guys enjoyed the journey of seeing how we were building building that wall and maybe it inspired you if you want to make your own kind of naturalistic cages. It's all about just using your artistic abilities and trying to make something cool. Of course it's great when I have Bruce and I have Lori to help me out because by myself I might have been lost. With that said, I'm going to go ahead and end the vlog and just wish you guys an amazing day, evening, whenever you happen to be watching because your support means the world to me and I truly love you so much. Can you do me a couple favors before we get out of here? Can you smash that like button? Turn those post notifications on so you know when I upload a video make sure to comment let me know how you like this video if you're excited to come see the arachnid wall at some point be kind to someone today and i promise i will see you guys tomorrow <laughs>